Buenos dias, mis amigos. Alright, so I think today I'm just going to start off um, by going over this comment from Babis Babionis, or whatever, I don't know what his name is, 8075. He says, can you guide me? Are you afraid to read my arguments except the language ones? Just say you can't answer them or you don't know yet. It's okay. The Bible is from God, but some translations have errors in them. And we know them. Not the King James it's not, it's not a version, it's the Bible, but he says, not the KJV, though. Other than that, the only differences is words with multiple meanings and words difficult to transliterate, which is such a minor issue that it only affects you if you want to dive deeper or do an analysis like scholars do. All right, so right there, I have to, I have to start on that right there. If you want to dive deeper or do an analysis like scholars do, well, all right. So here's the problem. <laughs> if you have a Bible that you hold in your hands, you're the scholar. You don't need another person who calls themselves a scholar or an expert to tell you what that Bible says you've got the words right in front of you alright so this idea of a scholar this is a myth this it's BS is what it is you should be a scholar if you have a Bible and you believe the Bible that you hold in your hands is from God then that makes you a scholar Wait. you think a piece of paper makes you an expert uh, you know uh, what do you call that a certificate of authentication or whatever <laughs> I mean come on you gotta go to seminary school for seven years to be a scholar well, what is it you gotta have access to manuscripts that nobody else in the world has to be a scholar well, what is a scholar in your opinion that magical mystical invisible imaginary person that's your scholar and so instead of trusting the Bible that you hold in your hands you trust this imaginary ghost that's I, that's the reality and, and this is what I keep saying day after day you have access to everything you could possibly ask for you don't need to rely on other men to tell you what God says. God tells you everything in his book. The book of the Lord, which is the Bible. In English, it's the King James Bible. Uh, you won't need it for 95% of the Bible. You don't need to learn those languages. Well, <laughs> you're saying 5% of it, I do need those languages? That's just enough to trick me, isn't it? And I better pull this up in case you haven't seen this one before. But in Genesis chapter 3, I'll just read verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, as God said? Question mark. See, the serpent is getting Eve 
to doubt the Word of God. In 2 Corinthians 11, verse 3, it says, But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. And that's what's going on, is so many people are trying to make this out to be, oh, it's so complicated, you need an expert, you need a scholar's scholars and experts they sit around a table all day long and they just look at all these different manuscripts and they just uh, analyze and diagnose and and hypothesize and blah 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 no no they don't do that at all and <laughs> it's a pretty amazing you take the you know, let's say let's imagine if you will an, a scholar who's got an IQ that is through the roof, smartest man in the world. And he's got access to every manuscript that man could possibly get his hands on. And the guy knows all the languages of the world. He's got it all. But if he's lacking one thing, he won't understand a single word. You get that? If he lacks one thing, he won't understand a single word. Even unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. You see, these experts and scholars, if they don't have faith, they will, will not have understanding. If you have faith, you will have understanding. It's really that simple. So simple. And it just, it burns my rear end when I constantly hear people making it out as though you got to have experts and scholars to tell you what God says. That's absolute bull butter. It really is. Now, huh, okay, so let's continue here you don't need 95% of you don't need to learn those languages you can search the word or the verse in the all-knowing Google will have the answer for you is that where you get the truth from Google uh, I you know what I don't even want to play this game it would be too easy. You've played this game, I'm sure. Search something on Google, and Google will lie to you. It's not the Bible. Now, you can find any answer you wanted, really, in Google. Is this a joke? See, you want me to analyze every single word that you're coming to me with are you afraid to read my arguments your argument is that Google is all-knowing that you get the truth from Google Google has all the answers I mean really how do I take you I can't take you serious You even know yourself, that's ridiculous. You can't know how it is if you have never done it and you don't need it for the gospel. However, it isn't wrong to do so. 
How can you imply it is wrong to read the same book in another language? Well, if you don't understand the Bible in the language that you're born into, how in the H-E double hockey sticks are you going to understand it better in a language that you don't know? This is a mind numbing stuff here. I don't know how in the world I, I look I get it there's a lot of people out there that have that same mentality well I don't understand it in English so let's go to Chinese I'll understand it in Chinese I just can't understand it in English come on man yeah I think a lot of people out there they just want to believe in anything but the truth of the Word of God I really do men love darkness rather than the light because their deeds are evil ah, it's unbelievable All right. Moses <clears throat> excuse me Moses broke the law not Genesis Moses broke the laws not Genesis I Who's, who's Genesis? I, I don't know. What in the world? Just don't do it if you don't feel like it. Okay, I won't break the laws. Well, trouble is, I've already broken the law. I don't feel like it. <laughs> but I've done it. And I'm guilty of the law. So, I'm at a point where I need a Savior. And the good news is, I have a Savior. It's the Lord Jesus Christ who washes me clean of all my filthiness. And there's a lot there to clean. And thanks be to God for our Lord Jesus Christ going to other people to learn more means unity oh unity unity with the devil denial of self genius uh, is that self I don't even know what is that? Denial of self genius? Yeah, I gotta stop denying that I'm a self genius and accepting that the Holy Spirit gives a wisdom to many people and that the Gospels are available to be questioned, as Paul said. Where'd Paul say that? I'm just curious, have you ever read the Bible, kid? Seriously. As for the languages and Enoch argument, that sounds good, but how can we even be sure about the Bible chronologies and how do we know God didn't preserve the book of Enoch? The Bible doesn't say Enoch wrote because Lamech and Methuselah wrote most of the book according to the book of Enoch itself. Alright, <laughs> alright, okay. Alright, well, it wasn't Enoch, it was Lamech and Methuselah. Wow, there, you got me there, buddy. Gee whiz. Man, my, I just, I thought I had it all figured out. I did, and then you got me. Doggone it. Let's find out. Uh, let's learn a little bit about Lamech. Alright, so there it is. You know, Lamech was in walking with Jesus or something. I'm not sure. Oh, no, wait. That's that's chronology. Hold on a second. Let's go back here. To, um, right there. There's, a, there's Lamech again. Oh, there's Lamech right there. All the days of Lamech were seven. Oh, who are you talking about here? Are you talking about...
and Lamech lived after he begat Noah 595 years. Uh, Lamech lived 182 years and begat Noah. Well, okay, so this is you're talking about Noah's dad. Well, you know who survived the flood? It was Noah and his sons, not Noah and his dad. And what I tried to point out and apparently I'm not doing a very good job of this, but I'm trying to point out that God confounded the language after the flood. Okay, so Lamech and Meth Methuselah, I can't even say that word. Let's do it this way. Methuselah lived 187 years Oh, oh! You mean Methuselah lived even before Lamech? Well, so this was Noah's grandpa. So there was Methuselah, there was Lamech, and then there was Noah. And Noah and his three sons survived the flood. It was Methuselah, Lamech, neither one of them survived the flood. And then it was after the flood when God confounded the language. So when God confounds the language, nobody understands that first original language. Nobody. <laughs> so what's the difference? I mean, you said Adam and Eve wrote it. They all died before the flood. Well, uh, yeah, okay, I'll just leave it at that. Enoch prophesied, and his prophecy can be found with exact words in the book that he didn't write. No. Oh. oh, he didn't write it. Oh, I thought you had me, except it turns out Lamech and Methuselah also lived before the flood. That you're gonna have to keep trying. You're gonna have maybe if he argued Lamech and Methuselah were just a couple of kids that lived well after the flood. It's not the it's not the same as you know Enoch's dad and grandpa. Different. It's a different Lamech and Methuselah. That's the that's the only argument you can make. couple of teenagers from the Bronx wrote it a few years ago. That might work. They received a Holy Spirit. And a couple of Catholic priests, they came to them and said, Here, share this with the world. That might work. But to say that Lamech and Methuselah, the, the dad and grandpa of Enoch, wrote, or no, I'm sorry, the dad and grandpa of Noah, to say that they wrote the book of Enoch, um, it still puts them in the category of living before God confounded the language. Okay. Alright, Enoch prophecy and prophet can be found with the exact, okay. Enoch prophesied in his prophecy can be found with the exact words in the book that he didn't write. Surely God divided, I think that's divided, the language, uh, not God confounded the language, divided the language. There was only one language, God confounded it, and I tried to make this point the other day, is that let's say um, the original language is English, and okay, so God confounds the language, he did not dividing, he confounded it. 
that means nobody was able to speak it afterwards but let's go with your scenario that okay God divided the language so now um, the original language being English now God dividing the language some people now speak um, Chinese some people speak Spanish well okay I speak English still though well we used to speak in English so instead of me trying to learn Spanish let's just all speak English I mean there's no point to go with the new languages if everybody already understood the first language and if they could still speak the first language there would be no no reason at all to <laughs> it just doesn't make any sense man nobody spoke the original language after God confounded the language nobody <clears throat> it just doesn't make any sense man it just doesn't make any sense if I spoke um, let's say I spoke English and uh, Japanese and you spoke English and um, you know whatever Mongolian language right I mean whatever man well, why would we try to learn these other languages when we have a common language already doesn't make any sense I don't know how else to explain simple logic I really don't I don't know how to teach it easier All right, surely God divided language but it's not the it's not that a mother couldn't communicate with her children <laughs> what are you talking about I mean, you'd have to say, all right, well, that's not even, goodness sakes. All right, so in Genesis chapter 10, we get an idea. I, I can't imagine what's going on in your head here. In Genesis 10, we have the division of the peoples. All right. And this division of the people um, is when God confounded the language and the different peoples had different languages. And these peoples are named. Uh, so this idea that a mother and wouldn't be able to communicate with her children, uh, I'm not sure yeah, I'm, not, I'm not sure what's going on in your brain it must have been for those on the tower be in between nations no idea what you're talking about man you're it to me this is what it looks like to me it looks like you're desperately wanting to hold on to this idea that the languages survived the God confounding the language it, it's the same thing that people try to say well the Giants or the Nephilim survived the flood even though it's clear that they didn't <laughs> well the Giants didn't and then of course um, there the Nephilim it's that's science fiction it's not in the Bible right. okay how can okay it must have been for those on the tower in between nations how can you how can you say you defend Jude not a single person who believes the book of Enoch discards the Bible but every single person that believes the book of Enoch they abjectly reject the Lord Jesus Christ and they do not believe the Bible at 
all. Every single one of them. You cannot believe in both. They just believe in one more book. Well, that's what they say. I understand. You lie and you lie and you believe your own lies, but it doesn't make it true. In Matthew 24, Jesus says, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I, Jesus, am Christ, and shall deceive many. I don't believe it's possible to believe the book of Enoch and to also believe the Bible. No way. Not possible. Now, you could make the argument, well, I, I've never read either book, but I believe both of them. Okay. All right. Well, you're ignorant. That's the only way you could make that statement, is if you're completely ignorant. There's no possible way that these two books um, can coexist, right? Because they are contrary one to the other. And you cannot have... It's not the Bible if it's got any errors, any omissions any contradictions if it has one single error it is wrong it's not the Word of God okay God cared about the man shining or I'm sorry the God cared about the man sinning because we are the Lords of this world and most of the angels had already fallen it all comes down to what Jews believed Nephilim Giants meant at that time It all comes down to what Jews believed Nephilim giants meant at that time. It all comes down to what the Jews believed. It all comes down to what the Jews believed. The Jews who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets and have persecuted us and they please not God and are contrary to all men. It all comes down to what they believe. It all comes down to what they believe. It all comes down to what the Jews believe. It all comes down to what the Jews. Oops, stop, oh, biscuit. Man, come on. Uh, it all comes down to what the Jews believe. The same people that Jesus says, Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. It all comes down to what the Jews believed. It all comes down to what they believe. It all comes down to what the Jews believed. It all comes down to what the Jews believed. It all comes down to what the Jews believed. Titus 1 verse 14, not giving heed to Jewish fables. It all comes down to what the Jews believe. In commandments of men that turn from the truth. It all comes down to what the Jews believe. Yeah, I can't get I can't go along with that, man. Uh, you know what it came down to what the Jews believed? No, can't do it. Uh, it doesn't matter what they believed. I mean it really it all comes down. I, I could do this for a while. 
I really could. I, I'm not gonna. Okay, I'll just do one. No. It all comes down to what the Jews believe. And it came to pass, Exodus 32, as soon as he came nigh into the camp, Moses saw the calf and the Jews. Yeah, okay. They, you could argue that one of those, they weren't called the Jews. Exactly. Well, I mean, <laughs> I'm kind of getting a little bit, um, you know, uh, how do I say this? Getting a little bit too technical, I guess. We got jewels. We got jewels. We got jewels. Here, let's do it this way. Let's do it this way. Let's do it this way. Oh, goodness sakes. Where's it at? Oh, for dog's sakes. There we go. All right, we got Jew mentioned in Aster. That's Galatians. Aster, 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 Jeremiah. So, I, what I'm just... I'm correcting myself, if you will. But you think about... You know, there are lots of examples of Jews, even the children of Israel and the people of God, even examples in your own life of how we've gotten it wrong. Yeah. <laughs> I used to believe in UFO aliens. It all comes down to what I used to believe. I used to believe in, you know, all sorts of silly stuff. It doesn't matter what I believe. The truth is not subjective. If you read it again, it is like saying the flood came because of the Nephilim. Oh. If I read it again, it is like saying the flood came because of the Nephilim. If I read it again, it's if I read it again, it is like saying the flood became, I'm sorry, it is like saying the flood came because of the Nephilim. Well, let's read it again. Genesis 6, and it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God and the daughters of men, I'm sorry, on it. Let me start over. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. Now, if just from a, you know, logical simple standpoint when it talks about men here it this is talking about the sons of God it's the same thing when it talks about daughters and daughters of men it's the same thing just it this is very simple this is not rocket science stuff this is not hard to understand it's pretty simple straightforward stuff and it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair. It's talking about the same thing. And they took them wives of all which they chose. It's pretty simple, straightforward stuff, man. If you under, <laughs> I mean, you really have to be warped and demented to not be able to make that connection. You really have to go out of your way to avoid the simple truth. To not be able to understand it. it. Brain damage, really. You've got brain damage if you can't put those together. And at the daughters of men, so the daughters belong to the man, <clears throat> excuse me, until the man gives his daughter to another man. 
daughters, daughters, men, same thing. So when you, the when the dad gives the daughter to a, another man, <clears throat> that's giving her in marriage. Excuse me. All right. So verse three, and the Lord said, "My spirit shall not always strive with man." Hmm. So it almost makes it out look like the Nephilim are having sex with women. Are you getting that so far? Where are you seeing that at? Yeah, yeah, right there. They took them wives of all these. Well, so you got to take the sons of God and turn them into green little men from Mars or Nephilim or UFO aliens. But it should be crystal clear. I mean, there, this is obvious, simple stuff, man. And it came to pass when men began to multiply in the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair. And they took them wives of all which they chose. How in the H-E double hockey sticks do you get that? How is that confusing? Wow. It, the, so the issue I really take, the exception that I have, is that these deceivers, these liars will say... Oh, the sons of God, they that's fallen angels. I I got a big problem with that. Now you think it's funny. I don't. You think this is a joke? Well I don't. You know I'm a son of God. Believe me, I'm no angel. Right, but you're not even saying that these are angels. You're saying these are fallen angels. You're essentially calling me a fallen angel, and you're calling our Lord Jesus Christ the head of the fallen angels. The leader of the fallen angels. And so I have a big time problem. Big, big time problem with that and uh, I, I understand all you people are going to hell and you're the Lord is gonna have vengeance on you I get it I got nothing to worry about it still burns my butt when people when you're teaching children that sons of God are fallen angels I, I that burns my butt it does it cramps my language to even talk about this stuff here Alright, and so the Lord said that my spirit shall not always strive with man. <laughs> so you go from man, oh God, man, men, sons of God, man. And you still can't figure figure it out? Come on, man. I just wonder. And people just willingly are blind. For he... For that he also is flesh, yet his day shall be in 120 years. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that. When the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men, which were of old, men of renown. How many times in one single verse can you put that word men, men, and men, and you still can't figure out that that verse is talking about men? If only there was one more mention of the word men in that verse, maybe you would have figured that out. It just wasn't mentioned enough. Maybe that's why you know maybe that's maybe it's God's fault that you can't understand nothing and God saw the wickedness of man wow you still can't figure it out huh it, it, it's over and over men men sons of God daughters of men my spirit shall not always strive with man Sons of God, daughters of men, children, mighty men, men of renown. And God saw that the wickedness of man. Well, it's almost like they're talking about Nephilim. 
uh, UFO aliens. It's, it's almost like God. It's talking like God saw so all these UFO aliens said, I'm going to flood the world. And you got to be willingly stupid or willingly ignorant to believe that. You're not seeing that anywhere. At all. It's not even remotely possible. It's not a possibility. It's not even... You can't even squiggle. You can't squiggle out of this. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil. Continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man. Wow. It's almost like they're talking about little green men from Mars having sex with my wife while I sleep. Having sex with the children and the dog even and the cat. It's like these creatures from outer space, man. It's almost like it's talking about creatures from outer space and God's gonna flood the world. That's what it, that's how I'm seeing this. That's what it looks like to me. Creatures from outer space are coming down and having sex with everything, and so God destroys the world. I mean, it's, you didn't even read it, man. That's when you make comments like that. It's like you didn't even read it, man. It's like you have no idea what the Bible says at all. And the Lord said, "I will destroy man." whom I have created from the face of the earth both man and beast and little green man from Mars little creatures from outer space no it doesn't say that at all man and beast creeping things and the fowls of the air and the UFO aliens in the air no it doesn't say that at all for it repent to me that I have made them talking about man 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 his heart men 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 <laughs> man Men, men, it's all talking about the same thing. The sons of God are men. Adam was the son of God. All of Adam's children were the sons of God. It's not rocket science. It's simple logic. And then, of course, it, people ask, well, how, how do you explain the sons of God? Well, I just did, right? Adam being the son of God and then all of his children are the sons of God and then fast forward to Abraham when he made a covenant with, um, with um, I'm sorry when uh, when God made the, the covenant with Abraham and this is when that sort of d dividing of God's people came about alright so we had God's people and then and then, uh, you, know, uh, yeah, you know, if you have one group of people, which is God's people, then outside of that group of people are nations that are not God's people. I go over this when I talk about Revelation 20. All right, outside of that one nation of God, the nations are deceived by Satan. All right, and then so fast forward to Jesus, and Jesus makes the kingdom of God available to whosoever believes in him. All right, so there are no longer one group of people with the uh, nations outside of that group of people. Now the kingdom of God is available to everybody, so now Satan is bound. All right, I mean, the, it's just a process of life, and the Bible's very clear on it, it's very simple. And you really don't have any excuse for not understanding it. And all you have to do is believe what the Bible says. It's right there. It's very simple. And I've showed this many times, and I don't think I'll ever tire. I'll never tire of, of sharing this. Because I want you to understand that you are just as smart as the smartest scholar expert in the world there ain't nobody that is smarter than you there is nothing that somebody can understand that you don't 
if you have faith. That's the key. Faith. It's not IQ. It's not seminary school. It's faith. Psalm 19 verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect. Converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure. Making wise the simple. So one way to look at this is you think take me the biggest dummy that's ever been and this is saying that the Bible can make me wise you think that's impossible well I don't know but that's what it says if it can make a dummy like me wise it can make you all that much more wiser it really can. And you think about the Word of God is just not words on a piece of paper. Jesus says, The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. In Hebrews 4 For the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart this is incredible stuff man this is not just oh well in the Greek and the Hebrew it means peanut butter and jelly <laughs> why would you go to foreign languages if you don't understand this simple stuff in your own language it's mind-numbing well it's almost like the it's it is like saying the flood came because of the the Nephilim the creatures from outer space and because humans had evil thoughts they because they, they come on. And because humans had evil thoughts continually, living in a world where all flesh was corrupt. The world wasn't destroyed because of the angels themselves, necessarily, because they are not killed by water. So they didn't, they didn't get killed. So God destroyed the whole world for nothing. Boy, God is dumb. Look at all the and, and. From there were Nephilim tell the flood. Problem is the word Nephilim's not in the Bible at all. And then of course uh, you look at the and 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 they you know, look and you know, let's look at the and and well, forty nine times. Ooh wee! Look at all that and. What the hell? What's that matter? Oh, well, let's look at the word the. Ooh, 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 look at that. Ooh, wee. Wow. Huh? Uh, what does that tell you? Yeah, right there, it tells you. Creatures from outer space came down and had sex with your wife while you were sleeping last night. That's what that's telling you. 40, 95 times. A lot of sex, man. A lot of sex. A lot of sex. No. I don't know what you're looking at, man. You didn't see this word here? That word there? Then that word there? Then this word here? You didn't see that? Too busy looking at... Too busy looking at... Uh, um, and... What's your obsession with that word? What's that? How's that relevant? Am I misunderstanding this here? Look at all the and and. From there were Nephilim till the flood. Well, the word Nephilim not even mentioned one time in the entire Bible, let alone not mentioned here in, in Genesis six. So you tell me my Bible's wrong? Telling me I can't trust God? So I'll tell me, I'm telling you right now, this is the Word of God. This is God. 
This is God, the Word of God. It is the, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. The Word of God is powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And you're telling me I can't trust the Word. Are you telling me God lied to me? I gotta believe you now? I mean, why do you still think this is a salvation issue? Well, if you don't believe the Word of God, how can you say that you're saved? Uh, you might be fooling somebody, and you're not fooling me. I don't know how it's not a salvation issue. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But you don't believe the word of God. So how can you hear? And if you can't hear, how can you have faith? And if you don't have faith, how can you be saved? Oops, dog oh, biscuit. I forgot what I was going to... Oh, yeah. For by grace are you saved through faith. Well, if you don't have faith, if you don't have faith in the Word of God, well, how can you say that you're saved? I don't know how it's not a salvation issue it is a historical issue well, historical man's history this is the word of God this is not man's history why do you bring Jesus up oh don't bring Jesus up when he's mentioned multiple times in the book of Enoch Sometimes as the Word of God and others like the upcoming Messiah. Well, the whole book of Enoch is a fraud. And, you know, I, I don't know, but the Jews or the Catholics, somebody came up with it. And they're passing it off as though it was somehow from God. It's clearly not. And I've demonstrated that over and over. You cannot have anything written by Enoch surviving the time God confounded the language. It's impossible. And the Bible never says it is written in the book of Enoch. If it did, the Bible would be wrong. All right, I've demonstrated that. I hope I made that very simple, very easy to see. The Ethiopian Bible is ancient. We do not need the Catholics to tell us about the Book of Enoch. We only need a translator. Oh, well, yeah. So we gotta have, we gotta trust man to tell us what God says. You don't see the problem with that. You're relying on man. And putting no trust in God, and they're saying, "Well, how can this be a how can this be a salvation issue? You're putting your faith in man and not in God. That it's absolutely a salvation issue." How will I know I am wrong? Can you concentrate? I'll try, buddy. I'll try to concentrate and use logic to deconstruct my arguments instead of avoiding them. I want to know the truth. Well, 
you know. What is that verse here? There's some verse somewhere in the Bible that says something. Somewhere in the Bible it says something. Oh, there it is. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. I want to know the truth. Jesus is the truth. And, well, all right, so how do I approach this here? It's interesting. I had no idea uh, what, what direction I was going to go into. I really didn't. What am I, where am I at here? How be it he, or I'm sorry, how be it when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. All right, in John 15, but when the comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the spirit of truth, which proceeds from the Father, he shall testify of me. John 14, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it sees him not neither knows him but ye know him for he dwells with you and shall be in you he's talking about those of us that are born of the Spirit of God the Spirit of God dwells in us the Spirit of Truth is in us and the Spirit of Truth guides us to all truth God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth so the, you want to know the truth well, the truth is, you must have faith. You must have faith. Let's use one example here. Um, in Matthew 13, uh, sort of echoing what we read in, in Isaiah, but it says, For this people's heart is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and, she be, and should be converted, and I should heal them. Alright, let me explain this to you. If without faith, your ears are dull. You can't hear and you can't see your eyes have closed there's a veil that is upon your heart because you don't have faith because you don't have faith you don't have understanding so you could have the highest IQ in the world you could have access to every piece of paper in the world and have absolutely no understanding whatsoever of the Bible because you don't have faith All right. unless they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and should be converted and I should heal them just like what we read in 2nd Thessalonians even on this day or second what I say second uh, it doesn't matter. Yeah, did I get that right? I don't, I don't remember now. But it says, even unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil is shall shall be taken away. Uh, so I, for some reason, I think I said Second Thessalonians. It says Second Corinthians. 
Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Right? It's all about faith. It's all about faith. And, it, and it's always been about faith. That's never changed, man. It's never been different. It's always been about faith. It's always been about faith. You're talking about looking for the word and? Well, go to Hebrews 11 and look for the word faith. You know, just looking for the word and? I, I don't know. It's, it reminds me of Bill Clinton. That depends on what the definition of the word is, is. Mind-numbing stuff, really. You want to know the truth. The truth is, in order to be saved, you must have faith. In order to understand the word of God, you must have faith. It's always been about faith. It's always been about faith. For without faith it is impossible to please him. It's always been about faith. All throughout time, evidenced all throughout your life, it's always been about faith. If you don't believe in something, how can you do it? You can't. Faith is of the utmost importance, and let's face it, deep down inside you know that Jesus is real. And that these guys on TV, they're all liars. You know it. Deep down you know it. So, anyways, I appreciate this, Babinos. Yeah, and I... I'm not avoiding you, but um, I, I went through every single thing you said in, in your comment here. And I'll reiterate that without having the Bible as the foundation for our discussion, it is impossible for us to come to any conclusion. Because my Bible says one thing, and your Bible says another thing. That's a problem. We have to have an, an established foundation. And when we read the Bible, it has to say the very same thing. It has to. Otherwise, we can't reconcile. We can't have this discussion about anything. All right, anything at all. It's just like, to me, in my experience, it's like the, the Muslims. You right? It, whenever you get pinned down, they say, well, you got to go back to the original language, and you can't trust anything in the English. Well, that's the same place that you're going to be put in. That's the same corner you're going to have to sit because I'm going to push you on something and you're going to say, well, you have to go to another language. Well, that, that's not, you know, that's not going to work. That's not going to work. And then, you know, I hear these people uh, like you and uh, lady, the other lady, you know, yeah. Look, this is all old stuff, man. You tell me that you talk to me like I don't know what the book of Enoch is. You know, I don't know what these foreign or these what do you call them? Extra biblical these uh, foreign books, really. <laughs> I I've studied all this stuff, man. And I've forgotten most of all of this. I really have. I don't. You know, you, you want to talk about what's written in the book of... I, you know, I studied that stuff so long ago. I don't know. It doesn't matter. It's obvious that it's a fraud. I'm not going to waste my time 
studying the stuff again with you. I'm just sorry, buddy. I'm going to focus on what the Bible says. I showed you what the Bible says. I showed you that it's impossible for Enoch to have a book. I don't need to go to the book of Enoch to show you that it's false. I can just go to the Bible and show you that the book of Enoch is false. You see what I'm saying? The Gospel of Thomas. Remember this one? Let's see if... The Gospel of Thomas. Where's this at? Uh, I don't remember. Here. Is this it right here? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's like one chapter, right? I I don't know. All right, so I'm just wasting time now. Oh, saying added to the original collection at a later date. So that was another thing. You know, I was going to talk to you uh, today about, um, and I never got around to it, but uh, just real quickly, if you look at, like, the NIV, um, if I could show you one example real quickly. If I could show you one example real quickly. Let's do it this way. If I could show you one example. Uh, just give you one thing to consider here. Let's do this way. Alright, so we got the NIV and the Legacy. Alright. The Legacy Standard Bible. <clears throat> Alright, so I want you to take a look here. On the left hand is the King James Bible. Alright, in the middle we have the, the NIV. Alright. Alright, so it says some manuscripts, some manuscripts. Alright, here. Let's go here. Later manuscripts, right there. Later manuscripts add the story of the adulterous woman numbering it as John 7 533 or, or 7 53 to 8 11 All right. later manuscripts now this is interesting because you got some manuscripts you got later in manuscripts <clears throat> what they don't tell you is that they're basing this off of manuscripts that were found 150 years ago and they're saying well this is the oldest manuscripts even though they were only found 150 years ago they've determined well these are older than previous manuscripts they don't tell you that much you have to learn that on your own now, this is another example of learning man's history right so another thing that they don't tell you is that these later manuscripts these are the Vaticanus and the Sinaitic, uh, Sinaiticus. I can't even say it. Sinaiticus. For whatever reason, I can't say it. Sinaiticus. Sounds funny, but the Vaticanus and the Sinaiticus, or whatever. I can't say that word, but. Hopefully you know what I'm talking about. These are Vatican manuscripts. Sine Atticus. I'm doubting myself now if that's how you pronounce it, but it doesn't matter. Va these are these are Vatican manuscripts. Man, they're not telling you that. that. And, and not only are they not telling you that, they're not telling you that these, the Vaticanus, doesn't even contain the book of Revelation. They don't tell you that, do they? All they do is they add these footnotes getting you to doubt the words that you read. 
Yeah, has God said? Just like what we read in Genesis 3 verse 1, when the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, I fear that he will also beguile you through his subtlety. Yea, has God said? Over and over again. And it's interesting here. Why would they remove the story of the adulterous woman? Unless the person that wrote it didn't like it because his wife was a cheating whore. So he took that part out. I don't know. I don't know why else it wouldn't be in there. I don't know. So go back to the Gospel of Thomas. Oh, some, again, this is brilliant. Staying, saying added to the original collection at a later date. Well, you know, we know everything there is to know about everything, and so we know that this was added at a later date. Well, yeah, it's got a, it's a little bit of a problem because when you read this, you realize how stupid this stuff is. The Gospel of Thomas. Simon Peter said to them, Make Mary leave us, for females don't deserve life. Is that what he said? Jesus said, look, dude, I will guide her to make her male. I'll turn her from a female into a male. I'll do a little, uh, you know, transgender operation on her. And uh, I will guide her and make her male so that she too may become a living spirit you know because women they don't they they don't uh, deserve life you're right Peter look dad you're right I'll guide her and make her male so that she too may become a living spirit resembling you males but yeah you know because Jesus he's he's a creature from outer space he says, look, dude, I'll make Mary a male so that she too can become a living soul like you humans, like you male, male humans, right? Because the female humans, they ain't, you know, they ain't getting, they ain't getting, uh, you know, whatever. <laughs> the, they ain't getting, they're not going to be a living spirit or or whatever <laughs> they, they're gonna die they don't deserve life for every female who makes herself mouse every one of you women if you you know get a penis transplant you know uh, then you're gonna enter into king the kingdom of heaven all you need is a pee pee that's it you don't need to believe in Jesus Christ you just need a pee pee and if you got a PP, then will you enter the kingdom of heaven? Well, what's wrong with the Gospel of Thomas? Well, it's from Thomas. Thomas was there with Jesus. Right? Oops. Okay, so what's the problem here? Babino, see, you know, explain to me what's wrong with Thomas. See, this is extra knowledge, man. This is extra wisdom and knowledge, and this is giving us stuff that the dumb Bible don't give us. What's the problem? You know, you know. <laughs> really, what's the problem here? It's like the Book of Enoch, man. You got the Book of Thomas. We got extra stuff that the dumb Bible it won't give us. It hides this. Stuff. This is hidden truth. That they don't want you to know. They don't want you to know that women don't deserve life. See, they're keeping that secret from us. Right? Is that the argument you're making? Oh, you got, on, one, on one hand you got the, the creatures from outer space. They're coming down and having sex with you. And then on the other hand, women don't deserve life. This secret stuff that they're keeping from you. That's why it's not in the Bible. They took it out of the Bible because they don't want you to know. Space creatures coming down, having sex with you and your wife. And uh, women don't deserve life. Man, this is... 
We can't let this out. You know, people can't know the truth. Is that is that what you're believing, man? Really? Is that what you believe? And then you want to say, oh, this ain't a salvation issue. Oh, it's not? This ain't a salvation issue? Uh, I, I disagree, buddy. I think the truth matters. I really do. And there's, you know, gosh, I haven't been in this for a long time. Now I'm not going to waste any more time on this. But, uh, you know what? I, if you're looking at me like I'm young and dumb and stupid, um, you know, I, let's keep talking, okay? Because this is all old stuff to me. All these books and stuff. And you want to get into whatever, man. But sit there and tell me that I haven't studied this stuff. You're making a mistake, buddy. You know, to wipe the snot off your nose and start reading the Bible, and then maybe we can have a discussion. All right. But um, to say that I'm not well studied, that I haven't looked at these foreign books, and you're treating me like I'm a kid, and to your own fault. All right. I'm not an expert on all this stuff at all, but I've looked at it. I'm not ignorant, I'm not ignorant of it. I've looked at it just as you're looking at it now and you're looking. Is this true? Is that true? I'm telling you, all those books are phonies. They're all concoctions. They're all fables. They're all make-believe stories. None of them are true. And none of them are from God. We got the Bible and it is from God and it is perfect and it is pure and it is incredible. It is the spirit of life and it is dividing. It is uh, the word of God is powerful, quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Dividing even the, yes, I can't quote the, vi the verse dividing asunder of soul and spirit there we go All right. so that's important man it that is so 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 important this stuff here can't trust none of it I forgot what I was gonna point to um, it doesn't matter I guess but uh, I guess that's it right I think you're making a mistake, man. You're making a mistake when you talk to me like I don't know stuff. I think I think you're making a big mistake. Now, I want to encourage the conversation, man. I want to encourage the conversation, but we have to have a firm foundation. We have to both agree that the Word of God is perfect. It is from God. And we cannot have a dispute on that if we're going to advance our conversation. All right? That's the conclusion that I came to. Right, this is important stuff, man. That's the conclusion. That's the only possible conclusion. That... There has to be a perfect Bible. Has to be. Otherwise, there is no foundation for truth. Right? There is no foundation for truth if you're going to say whatever. You know, all the, this Bible says that, this the other Bible says this. Well, then there's no standard. There's no solid ground to stand on. That's a problem because you can't advance conversation without establishing a firm foundation. Now, I guess I'll end it on this. You look at the this is interesting to oh no, they took it out. 
Right. Well, anyways, though, what, what I was going to show you, oh, these are all, this is so old, I don't know if half these links work anymore. But, man, this demonology, it's interesting, it's the study of devils, alright, or what people call demons. It's the study of, and to me, why don't people want to look at that stuff? And they're so fascinated with zombies and all this sort of stuff. Well, you ought to take a look at this. Demonology. A book written by King James. Just a, a book that he actually wrote. <clears throat> you know, people say, well, King James translated the Bible and he was, uh, you know, homosexual. Well, no, he wasn't. It doesn't matter anyways because he didn't write the Bible. He commissioned 54 of the greatest scholars of his time to spend seven years together translating the Word of God into the English language. And then of course in 1605 the Roman Catholic Church tried to kill him remember remember the 5th of November right? because what he was doing was against what the church the Catholic Church wanted and they made they had made it illegal to have a translation in the English language and the reason for that is they just wanted everything to be written in the English or I'm sorry in the Latin alright so the, that way you have to depend on the Catholic Church to tell you what God says well now they've they've come up with a new way well you gotta depend on what the experts say the scholars you gotta depend on what the translators say to tell you what God says it's the same thing they just found a new way of going about it you can't trust the Bible you gotta depend on the Roman Catholic Church to tell you what God says that's ridiculous that's exactly what's going on but anyways, I was just curious. I wondered if maybe I might have had stuff. Oh, that's probably something right there. Um, anyways, uh, I just was going to go over how they... I don't know what this is. Um, but... This it was a very tedious process. They spent seven years together translating the Word of God into the English language. All right, so that's it. I'm done. I'm done. Um, but look, man, I appreciate the comment. I do. I haven't ignored you at all. I've made the point very clear from the beginning that in order for us to have furthered to further our conversation we must agree this is from God otherwise we're just making stuff up or we could be right we both could just make up whatever you could say there are little creatures from outer space I could say no they're coming from the center of the earth and we've got to run we got to hide we can say whatever we want man because there's no foundation for anything that we're talking about we have to have an established foundation it has to be the Word of God and we have to have that agreement we have to have that agreement so um, I understand um, Phil you know Phil uh, philosophically where you're coming from but again without that foundation how can we establish anything Ecclesiastes 12 verse 13 let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter fear God and keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of man Alright, so thanks, buddy. I appreciate this comment. I really do. I'm not afraid of anything.
not afraid of anything that you said, but it's just I know where you're coming from. I've been down this road with a numerous other people and for a long time. Really. I've, maybe not that long. I've only been a believer for 22 years. Uh, but from the get-go, I've taken this stuff very seriously. From the get-go. You know, I was 31 and I felt like I was way behind everybody. I had a lot of catching up to do. And I loved it, man. I loved it. I loved reading the Word of God. I loved reading the Bible. I loved learning the stuff. Man, it's amazing. Uh, the thing is, it became pretty apparent to me after a relatively uh, short period of time that all these preachers they pose themselves as experts but uh, they're no experts at all they don't hardly know anything at all and how is it how is it that there could be so many people you think should be so great and yet they don't know nothing how is it man how is it uh, you got a, a pastor at a church with a thousand people how is it that they are completely unaware of the baptism of Jesus Christ how is it that a person could get in that position can go all through the seminary school and to get anointed as the pastor at a church, a mega church. And they got a thousand people that go to that church in, in, in a town with, I'm not even sure if it has 10,000 people. And yet you're a pastor at this church and you don't know about the baptism of Jesus. You know, all there is to know about the baptism of John, you didn't realize there was a baptism of Jesus. Man, and here I am, a dummy, trying to learn, trying to figure stuff out, and I know it because I read it and I believed it. So that it tells me that tells that moment told me there's something wrong. Something wrong with the churches. And and I hardly hardly care. You know, when I'm going through that process of trying to learn what the Bible says. I hardly care. It's a, it's a big deal because it shows you how many people are deceived. But what good does it do you? if you don't know the truth yourself so for me it's very important very important from the from very early on that I've learned the truth of what the Bible says and so I went through this process that I, I think so many other people are going through and so I'm reminded of that and then I'm reminded well hey don't be so hard on people because I was once deceived big time, you know, and go even go back even further and say, hey, I, I once believed I was a um, evolved monkey. I was a super monkey. I was going to evolve into a little green man. That's what I believed. If I'm being honest with myself, that's what I believed. All right, so, um, so I went through this. I'm still going through it every day. I've got to learn. I've got the, you know, I could read all day long, study all day long, and never figure everything out. <clears throat> That's impossible, right? But it's so exciting to learn what the Bible says. And, you know, you've heard me talk about this quite often connect the dots man and really the more dots you connect the 
the more you realize how simple all this stuff is and you know and really isn't that what it's about the the simpler it is the easier it is to understand the Bible and that's really what we want to do isn't it understand the Word of God and so you know you read you study and you connect the dots right and you know that that that's what it's all about and then one when, when you do that then maybe you can get into a a position where you're able to teach it and it's a process man and it's some that's why it's important for us to talk about these things right. so it's very important so I got a bunch of stuff on here that uh, I, I don't know why it's still on there this is like me in my my house I got a bunch of stuff that I don't even know that I have probably I, I'm what do you call that I'm a person that has a hard time throwing away stuff I've got stuff that I had I've had for probably 30 years I'm not kidding you I might even have stuff I had when I was a teenager. I'm not kidding you. And so, you know, this really reflects my house. That's terrible to say. I will, I will say that I do from time to time throw stuff out. I, I realize, okay, I'm never going to use this here. Never, ever gonna have any use for this so let's throw it out I've had it for 35 years let's throw it out so it takes me a while but I'm I do have the ability to let go of stuff right I just hold on to stuff thinking well maybe I might need it someday and that's probably why I got all this stuff here all right who cares who cares? Uh, let me just finish on this. But you know, so I, I appreciate the comment, buddy. But I'm not afraid of anything that you're laying out. All right? I'm not afraid of nothing you're laying down here. I just I feel like uh, it's real simple. That's it, man. We gotta have a foundation. We must have a perfect Bible. We do have a perfect Bible. Until we both agree that there is a perfect Bible and that we have that we worship a perfect God, our conversation is vain. Alright, that's it. Alright, have a good day, buddy.